I did want to take you back just for a moment to The Apprentice. I mean, it was, it was interesting, it was interesting, wasn't it, to hear Mark say that he didn't like to, you know, to say, you're fired. Um, but we saw during The Apprentice those young people learn a lot from you and from their experiences. But what do you learn from the show? Well, it's funny, I, before The Apprentice was on, which was shot last year, I was, prior to that, well, I was the chairman of a general electric company which is ran Australia, New Zealand and India. I ran all those places and obviously, you know, you get toured around, you get flown first class, you get picked up and you live in this sort of rarefied atmosphere and I wouldn't employ anybody or fire anybody. And um, as a result of that, you lose touch mm. with people, particularly young people or particularly people who need a job. Um, and you start to forget about things like well, you, you lose your empathy. And during that process, um, I didn't actually go into it thinking this, but during the process, I started to learn about what young people do and don't know. And I was looking for, I started finding myself looking for who, which person should I employ? Um, what is my process of doing that over a 10 week period? And the only thing I could fall back on was the sort of stuff I just talked about, is looking for people's character. And I learned that about myself. I had lost touch with that. And um, it was a sort of very rewarding experience from that point of view. It was a social experiment. It, it was very interesting that you had that, that opportunity to, to learn those things. And from what we've just heard from Mark Boris, clearly, you know, you think a lot about what goes on inside people's minds and indeed even inside their hearts. There are not many business leaders who would have had a personal audience with the Dalai Lama, but I understand that you did. What did you learn from him? Yeah, we, uh, well, he said to me I could ask three questions. Um, I got to see him as a result of my brother having connection with him, and uh, I had to think what my three questions are, but uh, were going to be. Um, but I can, I'm happy to share one of them with you. Um, there was two others which I'll keep rather private. But um, the first que the question I asked him was, um, and it was actually prompted to me by one of my sons who felt as though he was having a lot of bad luck at school at, at the time. And um, the question was, how do you get rid of bad karma? You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a Buddhist by any means, but I have a little bit of an understanding of it as a result of a bit of searching. But, and the, the, his response to me was, um, to the way you get rid of bad karma is you create just good karma. So you inherit bad karma from perhaps a past life or something you've done that's been bad over a long period of time. But you can negate it or neutralise it just by creating good things around you by doing good deeds and thinking good thoughts. And, uh, and I remember taking that back to my son and telling him that. Um, but I think like, that sounds a little spiritual, etc. but it's actually quite good practical advice. Just do good things for people and a lot of times the, the crap that's happening around you can be overwhelmed by the good things. Well, that's really been the theme of, of your address today, that, that things that perhaps might generally seem spiritual or just to do with personalities actually go down to the core of business practice and, and, and also to everyday life. Correct. The virtues that you've been talking about are things to do with everyday life as well. In terms of that balance between being, I'm sure, the very hard-working and, and time-consumed and time-pressured person you are and, and the rest of life, how do you manage that, that work-life balance? Um, funnily enough, these sorts of events help me because it makes me sit down and think about something other than what I'm doing in the office. So this morning I got in quite early and I started writing this out. Um, and uh, so opportunities to sit down and actually reflect on something that you need to do properly and deliver to somebody. In other words, I had to articulate what I had to say to you today um, made me then clear it in my own mind. Um, they help. Um, uh, I'm not really a s sort of a golfer or any of those sorts of things, but I. But phys what, what, what do you do to have fun? What what actually really relaxes you? Um, I love going to the footy. Uh, <laughs> go to the roosters. Couple, couple of other people do uh, here too. <laughs> sorry, South. Um, bad luck. Um, I go to. The, I love my football. I, I'm probably. I'm, I'm an observer. I love to observe sport, and um, I love music. I'm a, a lover of music. Um, I spend a lot of time in my garden. I mean, it's going to sound ridiculous, but um, I'm a gardener and uh, I grow my own vegetables. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> Not but because I'm mean, uh, <laughs> but uh, my dad's Greek and he's, come, he's a farmer by background. And uh, the Greeks, he still grows tomatoes and we have tomato contests and uh, <laughs> fantastic lettuce and all that sort of stuff. 
You know, you, you, you talk about your dad and, uh, and, and, and those uh, roots that, that you've come from. Many, again, going back to the, uh, the Apprentice, many of those people who were there were young people who were going to change a lot over the years. When you look back to yourself, perhaps in your 20s or even before then, as you began, how much do you think you've changed? How big a journey has it been? Uh, well, the journey, I, I, I changed, well, I probably haven't changed, Richard, but um, I've done some things which I would consider outside of my character, which, is usually, which I've usually done because of um, opportunity. Um, you know, maybe having access to too much money or just getting carried away with what you consider as your lifestyle um, and, and you forget what's basic, what's, what's real. And as I said earlier, you've got to give yourself an uppercut every now and then and uh, you know, take yourself back to what is basic and what's real. Um, so I haven't changed much since I was a kid growing up in punch bowl and, you know, um, weeding the garden out the back with Dad growing the tomatoes. And uh, I mean, I've got a house in Camp Cove now, so I weed the garden in Camp Cove. It's different. <laughs> but, uh, but I've got tomatoes in the backyard and I still curse if the, uh, if the worms get it. And uh, by the way, I've got chooks. I don't know if anyone here is from Alara Council, but I didn't apply for this. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, but they're only recent, and I can move them. <clears throat> uh, but they haven't laid any bloody eggs either. But um, <laughs> they, I told my, I got four sons, and I told my boys, I said, um, I'm going to watch them for the next couple of weeks. Unless they start to produce, they could be out of here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's fantastic that, uh, that you've been able to share these things with us. And, uh, and I think we'll, we'll carry that image of the tomatoes in the backyard in Camp Cove, as well as the obviously very high level of business success that, uh, that you've been prepared to share with us today. We've learned a lot from you. Thank you for those insights. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please thank Mr. Mark Boris.